Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy and in this video I'll be showing you how to integrate Salesforce with third-party business applications using Power Automate. The example that is being demonstrated in this video involves a Salesforce opportunity stage being changed to sales order signed. This will trigger High Gear to create a task that uses data related to the opportunity. Then after the task is created in High Gear, the Salesforce opportunity is updated with the ID of the high gear test that was just created and the opportunity stage is changed to order data sent to high gear. Before we get into the details of how Power Automate was configured for this example, if you haven't made a connection to Salesforce from within Power Automate, you will be prompted to sign in with the Salesforce account that you wish to make that connection with. You'll have to specify whether the Salesforce environment associated with the account is a production or dev environment, as well as the API version of the environment. After this, you just have to log in using the email and password for the account. Deciding which account to make the connection with is important because in Salesforce, any change made by Power Automate will be labeled as a change made by that user. We recommend creating an account that is strictly used for integrations, so users will know when a human made a change as opposed to the automation. Once you've set up your connection between Salesforce and Power Automate, you can begin creating automations. We're now looking at the first step of this automation that uses a when record is modified trigger. The only required field for this step is the Salesforce object type field. I've set this field to opportunities since we're referencing opportunities in this example. You'll notice that in the filter query field, I've specified that the stage name must equal sales order signed for the automation to trigger. If you plan to use this type of logic in your automation, it will be important to reference the Salesforce field names rather than their labels. To view the names of fields associated with opportunity records, while looking at an opportunity in Salesforce, navigate to the setup icon in the top right corner of the window and select edit object. This will bring you to the object manager page for opportunities. If you select fields and relationships while on this page, you can see all of the fields that exist for opportunities. If we scroll down to the bottom of this page, you'll see that the field label for the stage name is just stage, whereas the actual name of the field is stage name without any spaces. Moving forward to the second step of this automation, we'll be using the Salesforce action that is titled Get Record. Here, we're going to retrieve information on the customer associated with the Salesforce opportunity that triggered the automation. In the Salesforce object type field, the value should be changed to accounts, since that is the object type that represents customers in Salesforce. In the record ID field, we'll be inserting dynamic content titled opportunity account ID. This was retrieved from the trigger step of the automation and represents the Salesforce ID of the customer associated with the opportunity. After this step is completed, information related to the customer will be able to be used as dynamic content in future steps. In step three of the automation, we'll be using a get record action just as we did in step two. This time, we'll be retrieving information related to the salesperson associated with the opportunity. In the Salesforce object type field for this step, we'll change the value to users. In the record ID field, we'll be inserting dynamic content titled opportunity owner ID that was retrieved from the first step of the automation. Just like in step two, after this step is completed, dynamic content related to the salesperson will become available to be used. Looking into step four of the automation, we're using a create task high gear action to automatically create a task that uses information related to the Salesforce opportunity. If you haven't done so yet, you will need to connect Power Automate to high gear. When making a connection to high gear, you will need to give your connection a name, specify the host name of the high gear environment that you are connecting to, as well as give an API key for the high gear user that you would like to make the connection with. To generate an API key for a high gear user, navigate to the account info page of the user you would like to associate the API key with and make sure that the user is allowed to sign into high gear. Once you've checked to see if the user can log in, scroll to the bottom of the account info page to the integration API key section and select generate new key. High gear will prompt you to name the API key and give it an expiration date. 
After this, the API key can be copied into Power Automate. Now that we're looking into how this step was configured, the first field you're asked to fill out is the task form field. Depending on the high gear task form that is selected, fields associated with the form will appear in Power Automate to be filled out. Certain high gear fields, such as the brief description, owner, and assignee must be filled in in order for the automation to work. When setting the owner and assignee fields, it's important to note that these fields are referencing the high gear contact IDs of the users you wish to have in those fields, not the names of those contacts. Looking into how the rest of this step was set up, you can see that we're inputting dynamic content that has been retrieved over the previous steps. For example, in the Salesforce Opportunity Owner Name and Salesforce Owner ID fields, we're inputting fields such as full name and user ID that were made available after the step that retrieved information related to the salesperson of the opportunity. In the Client Company Text field, we're inserting dynamic content titled Account Name that was made available after the step that retrieved the customer information from Salesforce. And finally, the remaining fields that have dynamic content that begin with the word opportunity were made available to be used after the trigger step of the automation retrieved all of the information related to the Salesforce opportunity. In the final step of the automation, we will be using a Salesforce update record action. Since we're updating an opportunity, the Salesforce object type should be changed to opportunities. Once this is done, fields related to opportunities will appear to be filled in. Fields such as the record ID, opportunity name, opportunity stage, and opportunity close date fields are required to be filled in. Though they're required, if you don't want any of these values to change, you can insert the dynamic content that represents each of them into their respective fields. If you select show advanced options, the list of fields will be expanded. In the high gear task ID field that we're inserting dynamic content titled task ID that was made available after the step that created the high gear task. This is how the high gear task ID is updated in the Salesforce opportunity. And with that, we've gone through an example where a Salesforce opportunity triggers the creation of a high gear task with the Salesforce opportunity being updated with the ID of the high gear task that was created, all using Power Automate. If you have any questions about Power Automate, Salesforce, or High Gear, links to resources on them can be found in the description. Thank you.